Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. Good morning, Calvary. My name is Chris Steele, and I'm blessed to serve as director for Child Evangelism Fellowship. And you know, the first thing we get to do is to recognize a group of dedicated uh, volunteers that started four Good News Clubs this year, just like you saw in that video. So I'm very excited to tell you that Calvary Church um, is responsible for uh, three Good News Clubs altogether, and then a fourth additional club in conjunction with a few other local churches. So let me tell you about these men and women who said yes to going out and reaching children. So picture this, last October, the beginning of October, all the way until just a few weeks ago in May, they've been going into elementary schools for an hour and a half after school and teaching them a Bible lesson, how to, how to, how to memorize scripture, songs, games, dances, giving them snacks and just teaching them about the love of Christ. And I want you to know all the hard work that they put in to do this. So countless hours preparing, practicing how to do the Bible lesson, team meetings, lots of team emails, right guys? Um, all through this year. Um, and I'm so, so proud of them. All under a brand new leader who's learning right alongside of them as well. So volunteers, would you please stand? And Calvary, let's give it up for these Good News Club volunteers. All right, you guys may be seated. So Calvary had over 30 volunteers serving weekly, and most of them came to the nine o'clock, as you can see, and about five or 10 of them were on vacation as well. But take a look at these pictures while I read six and give you some testimony stories, okay? So as I said, uh, Calvary had four clubs, over 30 volunteers served weekly. We had around 130 students, elementary age students weekly. And we had over 30 salvations this year. Now I can stand up here all day and give you testimony after testimony, but I just wanna give you a few of these. So when the gospel touches children, it changes their lives at that time and then also forever. And it changes mix. And I wanna tell you about a, a student, um, I don't wanna give his real name away, but let's call him George. So back in October, um, I was there in the first, the first club, the first few weeks of club, and George is the third grader, and George would hardly ever stay in his seat. And George blurted out while everyone was trying to teach. And to put it politely, George was a major challenge. Can you picture that? You know what I'm talking about. So I come back a few weeks later, and I notice a, a marked change. Uh, George, he's still getting out of a seat. He's still blurting out answers, but he was a lot. And he knew the answer to every Bible question that was being asked. Fast forward to this March, I was talking to one of the volunteers there and they said, hey, did you know that George's whole family attends a local church now as a result of this club? And I said, really? I said, he said, well, George would go home telling his mom and dad, we got to go to church. We got to be part of a local church. And so they now attend a local church and George was baptized on Easter Sunday. <laughs> the power of this ministry is that we get the opportunity. We have a wide open door to go in and talk to children, to tell them about the love of Christ. And children like to receive the gospel and children like to tell the gospel too. That's really neat. Um, one of the teachers in our building, one of our buildings came to me and said, a team of teachers and I, we've been praying, we've been walking the halls of our school for months, just asking God to show up in our school. And we believe this good news club is the answer to our prayers. And I, as I, 
would talk to her throughout the months, she would say, now I, I see fourth and fifth graders praying at lunch together and praying on the playgrounds for each other. And we can tell a big, a big change as a result of the Good News Club. Um, isn't that cool? So, you. Um, lots of parents have come to me and other volunteers and just said, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this for my daughter, son, granddaughter, um, grandson. And I've had parents come up to me and say, I, I would ask them, how's Good News Club going for you this year? And they would say, great. Every week, my daughter comes home and tells me all that she learned about Jesus. And uh, another one of my favorite testimonies is um, we will, um, the students will always get like a take-home bag that's got some snacks and a quiet time sheet because we're trying to encourage them right now how to have quiet time with the Lord. They get some snacks. And then sometimes we'll throw in some discipleship materials. So we threw in like a small card, a little promo card about um, a, a CEF app called Unite TV, which basically hel helps them like with Bible lessons and things. One parent came to me and said, every night, that's the, before we go to bed, we walk and we do a Bible lesson together as a family, just because of putting that one little card in there. That's so cool. Um, principles. Uh, principals and teachers have been so open, so welcoming to us. They know that when we come in, we're, we're a positive influence there. We're light and they're, they're open. They're welcome. They're very welcoming. Lastly, I want to tell you the testimony I've seen in the volunteers. This might be my favorite one. I have seen these volunteers grow so much this year. You know, it's kind of like they've been on a, a year-long mission trip. So they stepped out and said, yes, yes, Lord, I'll go. I want to I wanna reach these children. And so we, we trained them and we got teams together and we launched clubs. And then we've had on out. And many of these volunteers have, they've just risen to the occasion. I tell them like, we're looking back on this year, of course, there are things we could do better next year, but we hit a home run. These four clubs have completely knocked it out of the park this year. They have done an outstanding job. So many of them have, they've done things that they didn't think they could do. They've stepped into teaching roles, doing the Bible lesson, teaching memory verses, running technology. Um, they have, they have grown so much and so many of them would come to me and say, you know, Chris, my faith has grown so as a part of this club. I thought when I stepped out, I was going to be, I stepped out for the children and I have been here for the children, but, but in this, God has really grown my faith in him, you know, and that's what happens when we step out and we, we do what God's called us to do. It's good. It's his plan. He wants us to grow. I'll get to that in a little bit. Get ahead of my notes. So, so many testimonies. Um, I want to thank you, church. Um, you have been so supportive of my family, of this ministry ever since the beginning. Many have been faithful prayer partners of CEF, and I want to thank you very much. Many of you have financially supported this ministry and you still do each month. And I want to thank you so very much. We could not do this without you. I'm very, very grateful. And lastly, I want to thank you, Pastor Ryan, and the administration here at Calvary. Calvary Church has been incredibly supportive of CEF. I can't even tell you how much, but I really believe if every church in Delaware were to have the same amount of initiative and support that Ryan has for this ministry and for reaching the children. He'd be in every elementary school in the state in no time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's give it up. So today I'm here to tell you uh, about this opportunity that we have with this organization, Child Evangelism Fellowship an open door to reach children. I want to, sh my goal is to share with you the burden that God has for children. And then also I want to just also share God's heart for every one of us as a child of God. Okay. So a 
testimony. So I've been a public school teacher for the past 17 years, and one of my major prayers has been throughout this time, God, would you please just let me share the gospel with my students? God, would you, would you somehow provide a way that I could do that? Because I know what really need. I know that they need to know that you are their creator, that you are God, and that you love them and that you made a way for them to live with you and to walk with you and you covered all their sins. That would be my that was my prayer for many many years and God in a wonderful marvelous way that I was never expecting. So last July I got the opportunity to become the state director for CEF and now that's my full-time job. I get to do that. It's so awesome. So, also, um, if you don't have a pulse on uh, children in what's happening in the present day right now, I, I need to share that with you. Some of you do because you work with children on a regular basis, or maybe you, ha you see your children or grandchildren. But I want to tell you, we are in a... Um, even in my own teaching experience, the past five years or so, we have taken... A, we've taken a wrong turn and we've really, we're going downhill pretty steadily. I'm talking about just the heart of children, the spiritual condition of children, morality, just the general well being of children. We, I've seen a, a major decline with that. I could talk all the time about this. I, I want to get to the good news, but I want you to feel this the anxiety, depression, confusion, suicide. As children, many, many, many children are basically crying out, who am I? What am I doing here? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. So we are at a day, we're at a time, we have to do something. But here's the good news. God has an answer and that Jesus truly is the answer to that. And, you know, as I was preparing for this message, I, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me that something really, really to me. We can look at all this and we can see the darkness and we can talk about how, how the darkness is, is growing. But, you know, darkness is simply the absence of light. Darkness doesn't even have any scientific properties. And the only reason that a place is dark is just because there's no light there. We have the light of the gospel in our hearts. We have the Bible. We have the truth that can set children and children are crying out all those questions. Who am I? What do they need to know? They need to know that they didn't evolve from some random lump of primordial clay over billions of years. God, Almighty God, did them. Almighty God, the God of love, he's, He is love. But we're born into a sinful, fallen nature. Sin is everything you think, say, or do that's wrong against God. But God is so loving that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, for our sins so that when we believe in him, he can make us clean again and the rest of our lives can be spent with him, growing to be like him. That's, thank you. That's the simple message we give to children. That's the boiled down gospel. And you know what? Not only can believe that, they do believe that and they're changed. That's what CEF does. That's why we exist. Before I get into telling you about the, the, the ministry of Child Evangelism Fellowship, you know, I want to just encourage you. I don't know about you, but I am of seeing the devil be bolder than God's people. So we have, you know, we know that the, the devil is, has no problem putting together strategies and putting all of the resources together to try to corrupt and pollute children. 
We know that, right? And we know that this is pretty much a fire hose of all kinds of corruption, perversion, evil. It's basically an invitation to sin. So if we know the devil is doing, when are we as the people of God going to say, hey, he's not going to be bolder than I am. I'm going to be the boldest one. I'm going to tell them the truth. I'm going to tell them what's, what's really true about God, what's really true about who we are in this world true about why we're even here in the first place, right? That's where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm ready. God has an answer. I want to encourage you guys that God has the answer for us in this day. And I believe CEF is one of the ways that he the children of this generation. He has many ways to reach the generations, but CEF is one of those ways. So I want to tell you a little bit about um, CEF. So um, it all started from a man named Jesse Overholzer, and he came across this Charles Spurgeon quote. He was a pastor, and this quote transformed his life. A child of five, if properly instructed, can as truly believe and be regenerated as an adult. That quote completely gripped him. And the rest of his life was spent going around preaching the gospel to remarkable results. Uh, Fast, so that was he founded Child Evangelism Fellowship in 1937. Fast forward today to today, it is the largest children's missions organization in the whole world. CEF is in almost every country, and we're in every. And right now in Delaware, we're just in a rebuilding phase. So just to give you an idea, in Maryland, in our neighboring state, they're in over a hundred elementary schools. They have a state director and multiple local area directors. They have multiple church partnerships in each one of those areas. DEF exists to partner with the local church to train, equip, and support volunteers so that you can go out and reach the children in your schools, in your neighborhoods. And so my vision for CEF, the short term, is to be have one chapter in each county. Multiple church partnerships in those counties where churches can partner with us so that we can reach children where they won't otherwise be reached. You guys, many children will never step foot in a church. They're certainly not going to hear the gospel here. How are they unless we go? That's why we're doing VBS in the community tomorrow, uh, starting tomorrow in two locations. I'm very excited about that. Pastor John and I partnering together with that. Um, We're doing another one the week after that. Uh, We get to have our first neighborhood club uh, starting soon. So this is the time that we need to find Christ. (laughs) Take a look at this quote by George Barna. If you want to shape a person's life, whether you are most concerned about his or her moral, spiritual, intellectual, emotional, or economic development. It is during these crucial eight years from ages, lifelong habits, values, beliefs, and attitudes are formed. Look at these statistics. Two thirds of Christians came to faith before the age of 18. 43% came to Christ before 12. Those are staggering statistics, are they not? Look at this Psalm, Psalm 71, 18. In gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. That's what we get to do. That's what these volunteers get to do. They get to go to the children and declare the mighty acts of God and his glory to the next generation. So they don't, somewhere along the way, we drop the, we drop the baton, we drop the bar. And we have a generation that knows hardly anything about God or anything about the Bible. Well, it's kind of like we're in Nehemiah's day. In, in the, in the, he goes to the temple and he sees the temple and all the walls in ruin. There, there's nothing what once used to be the, the, the beautiful city is completely crumbled. It's got no, nothing is there. 
first thing he does is he weeps. He says, God, I see this. God, what, do you, what can you do about this? Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's where we are today. When we look, we look at our society, we look at families, we see, I don't know if you're, if you're like me, I see the brokenness. I see that, I mean, I come across it every day. Children, they're, they're broken. And the first thing is I weep. God, what, what can we do? Well, God always has a plan. God always has a plan. He is not done with us. He's not finished with you. He wants to use you and I to reach the lost. If we will say, yes, Lord, I'll go. I don't feel very qualified, Lord. You're going to have to help me, but I'll go. You know what? In the book of Nehemiah, what does it do? They all came together with one mind. They were unified to rebuild. And it says that God, it's, it lists every family that built. This family built next to this family, built next to this family. They rebuilt the walls. Can the walls that protect children, can we bring them back into a life of knowing God? That's my vision. That's the burden that I believe God's given me. In Psalm 90, it says, Satisfy us in our earliest youth. Give us constant joy to the end of our lives. Let our children see glorious things. Let the Lord our God favor us and give us success. It's youth that the time when we need to know God. Um, and a little bit to introduce CEF and the, the worldwide uh, vision and the history of it. I just want to read a few quotes to you. Missionary strategist said, and, and also about child evangelism, it's crucial that missions efforts be reprioritized and redirected to the four to 14 age group worldwide. Dr. Paul Rood, former president of Biola University said, if I had my life to live over, I would devote it to child evangelism. If I deal with 20 adults, I'm usually able to win one to Christ. But if I deal with 20 children, 19 of them will accept Christ. The next great revival will be a children's revival. I could go on and read many, many more quotes to you, but children are the mission field. We don't have to go overseas. We don't have to go anywhere. The children are right here in our backyards. They're right here in our local schools. We don't even have to learn a new language. So they're right here. We do have to learn about them. We do have to learn what they're going through. We have to know what they're thinking and what they care about and what they love. But we can do it. We can go on that mission field. It's, a, it's actually a beautiful mission field because many of them receive and, and then many of them tell with great boldness. I want to tell you about some men and women who were saved at a young age. I could find this page here. Okay. So the mission and vision of CEF is to evangelize boys and girls with the gospel boys and girls, young age, and then connect them to the local church. Listen to these famous men and women of God who were saved at a young age. Corey Ten Boom, saved at the age of five. Amy Carmichael, saved at three. James Dobson, age three. Jonathan Edwards, seven. Richard Baxter, a Puritan preacher, age six. Steve Green, age eight. Matthew Henry, the great Bible commentary, age 11. Henrietta Mears, saved at age five. Dr. Isaac Watts, the hymn writer, saved at age nine. So when children get they have their whole lives to learn who God is and to walk with Him and to serve Him. That's our mission, to, to help them when they're young. And in Daniel 12, it says, talking about the end times, and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. That's us. We get to live in this, these last days. And the Bible says, when we turn people to righteousness, we shine like the stars. That's what we're doing in Good News Clubs. We're turning children to God and we're teaching 
about who He is and His plan for their lives. It's really a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Okay, I want to, uh, we're talking a lot about CEF, and I want to transition and talk to you about our privilege as children of God, okay? So would you please open your Bibles, teen, Matthew 18. In this passage, Jesus's, Jesus' disciples come to him and they have a question for him. They said, one, his disciples came to him and said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put, them, he put him in the midst of them and said, truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest. Heaven. What does it mean to be a child of God? So here Jesus is teaching us that if we, we have to be converted and turn and become like a child to even enter the kingdom of heaven. And also he wants us to maintain this childlikeness. What does he mean by this? We could talk a long time about what he means, uh, but Pastor Ryan says I got to keep this under 90 minutes. So I'm just going to, oh, a couple of you here. So, um, we, we need, one of the things it means is we need to depend on God. Children are dependent. And we, as God's people, we need to maintain a dependent. Like the volunteers, when they stepped out and they said yes to go on a mission, to go on the mission field, they had to, they had to depend on God. They had to say, God, would you use me? Would you speak through me? Would you lead me? I have to depend on God. We, when, to do what God's asked you to do, you, you have to depend on God. You have to maintain that childlikeness where you lean on God. And the neat thing is when you do that, what happens? God shows up. God comes through. And He wants a childlike dependence on Him. You know, I don't know if you are, if you're going through whatever, it doesn't matter whatever you're going through. I want to encourage you and remind you that if you've accepted Christ, you are his child and you can depend on him. We could depend on him because, because he's good. He's faithful. He's mighty. He's consistent. He never changes. And Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Our Lord, kind. He's so gentle. We can depend on him. We can trust him as a child. No matter how old we become on this earth, we're always going to be the children of God. And we need to remember to depend on him. The second thing we know as being a child of God, that means is our father. There was another boy in the Good News Club I want to tell you about. Let's say his name is Timothy. He, um, at the this is another club on the very first day of club. All the other children are singing. They're, they're dancing to the videos. They're so happy. And then I see him just sitting there like this. I'm like, oh, I need to pray for him. I start praying for him. I, end up, I strike a conversation with him, start talking to him. And he starts talking about the craziest things. I think the Bible lesson was on like how God is our creator. And from the beginning of time, he created everything. He starts talking about how asteroids are going to destroy the, the end time stuff. And it was just, it was crazy stuff. I thought, man, we began, we began to teach him about what the Bible says about who God is, about how he's, their fa- he's our father and he's good, he's kind. And I saw him transformed. He, his faith was believed in the craziest things about God in the world. And at the end, his, his, he knew that God loved him. You know, it's, our, it's, it's out of our hearts that we live, right? The Bible says with the heart, we believe. And we live out of our hearts. If we have faith in, in all of this unsteadiness and this craziness, we're going to live out of that. People are going to, our life's going to be crazy. But if we, if we know that God is our father, we come from him. In Ephesians 3, it says, for this reason, I bow my knee 
Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth and on earth is named. God is where we get our name. He is the one who's given us an identity and a purpose and a nature and a reason for living. I can't tell you how many times I've had to run to my father. (sighs) Oh, father. I don't even get the other words out. (laughs) I just say, oh, father. And I actually am about to say, I need, but he won't let me. The words come out, you. I begin talking about you. See, he's calling us. So I start to pray and I I just like almost feel his hand on my shoulder. And he's like, I got you. You're my son. I have you. Remember, God is our father. And that means that we teach the kids this. It doesn't matter where you came from, what your home life was, what your home life is. John 1, 12 and 13 says, but to all who did receive him, talking about Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When we believe in Christ, we become born into God's family. And that we have to always remember that. It doesn't matter what our past was. Jesus said, in me, you are now born of God. His plan, he planned your life. And when we receive Christ, we have a totally new nature. God is our father and we can drive the stakes down and trust that, right? Because he he came from. And it's so neat when we teach children this, because this is the, one of the verses that we teach about assurance of salvation. You believe in Christ, like that verse says, you trust in him, you are a child of God. Jesus says it. Everyone who believes on him, who receives him, he gives us the right to become his children. You are transferred from darkness into light, from, no, from brokenness or wherever your family came from into God's family. And the good news is that no matter what kind of father you had, even if your father was the most amazing father ever, like my dad. Thank you, dad. You, God becomes our heavenly father and he is perfect and he will take care of you. That's the truth. That's the truth that sets us free, right? And that truth is actually the way we get over right? If we, have, if we keep tripping over the same thing, we don't say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. We speak the truth about ourselves and say, God, thank you that you saved me. God, thank you that you're my father. Thank you that you called me to yourself. Or help me, God, get over that. And our, our God is a good father. He does that. He makes us like him. If we're going to teach these things to children, which we do, we need to remember them ourselves. We need to remember that God is our Father also. We don't need to hear that, don't they? We need, to hear, we, need to be remind, we need to be reminded of it too. The last thing it means to be a child of God, we need to depend on Him. We need to know that He is our Father. We need to, um, the last thing is that we are called to be like Christ lives are to be spent to grow up and become like Christ. I love this verse, 1 John 3, verses 3 and 4. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so, the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what what we will be has not yet appeared But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. He's saying, could it be any better that God loved us and is calling us his own children? Does it get any better than that? That almighty God is calling us his children and that he is in the 
us to be like him. That, what is better than that? That is great news. We didn't get saved to get a ticket into heaven and we're just waiting for our number to be called. No, we, thanks Ryan. We got saved so that we, once we're saved, we can grow to be more and more like Christ our whole lives. So that, that people, we, we take part in his work. We do, we do life with him. He sees what needs to be done on the earth and he lets us feel it in our hearts and he lets us carry it out. That's his purpose. He has a plan for each of you, each of us. He wants us to be with him. How can we grow up to be like Christ? That's the question, right? If our lives, once we're saved, if we're to be sanctified, we're to be set apart for him. How do I'm glad you asked. In Mark 3, it says, Jesus appointed 12, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach. First, they had to be with him. And after they were with him for so long, they became like him. They did what he did. They said what he said. And that's the same for us, right? God has a plan for us to grow and to become like Christ. Praise God. Um, lastly, a big part of that, you know, um, young people that just graduated, or uh, so I know you probably hear this question a lot. What's next? What are you going to be now? What are you going to do with your life? You know, God actually has a lot to say about that, young people. Seek God in His Word. He has a purpose. Here is one major purpose that he has for you, and it goes for all of us. John 15, 8. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. That is God's purpose for each one of us, that we bear much fruit, that when people would look at our lives when we're done, because we said yes to Christ and we followed him, people would be able to look at our lives and say, wow, look what God was able to do with your life. Isn't that what you want? You have joy when you step out with the Lord. I see joy in, the volu- in my volunteers when I, go, when I go and visit with them and I see them, they see the, the impact that they're making with children. You have joy when the Lord's with you. There's no joy on the couch. There's joy in the work though. There's joy in the harvest. That was rude, wasn't it? I'm sorry. (laughs) There's joy in the harvest. The Bible says that the harvest, but the workers are few. So pray that God would send workers into the harvest. I see the harvest field and I want to know, do you see it too? Would you, is God moving on to go and reach the lost? Pastor Ryan's been doing an amazing job going through the book of Acts and we see God moving through his people to reach people everywhere. Is God moving on your heart to reach children? Um, if there's any, if there's any to be involved with this ministry, there's two ways to do that. Um, there's, a, I have a table in the back, in the in the lobby there, and then also on our website, which I think they're going to put up there. Um, the website's probably the fastest way: cefdelaware.org. Um, if you want to be part of our prayer support team, if you want to be your team. We're going to be having more Good News Clubs coming up in the fall. We'll do a training in August, and then we're going to launch some new clubs. Um, If you want to support us financially, you can all find that on the website there. You just hit the contact button. Um, I want to thank you again, church, for your support of this ministry. And I hope today was reminded of our gracious Heavenly Father and how we, as His children, can live. You can depend on Him. He is your father and you can go to him for anything and the rest of your life. May it be spent 
become more like Christ and bearing much fruit. Thank you. Thank you.